Hi everybody. Welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Still too cold to fish and work on a boat. I might work on a boat a little bit this afternoon. It's warming up. It's about 42 degrees right now. Water's still firm. Can't go fishing. So I'm going to work on my old yard jeep. I'm going to show you what it sounds like when a drive shaft U-joint is going bad and what the uh, how I'm going to repair it. Uh, how, to, how to pull a drive shaft, how to replace the U-joints, how to reinstall it. And we'll take her for a test run when I'm done. So stay tuned. Let's have some fun. I'm going to see if I can show you what the noises sound like right now uh, when you hear this crunching sound of a drive shaft that's got a bad U-joint in it. Okay, we're going to fire the Jeep up. Alright. See if I can make it make that noise. I'm going to put the camera close to the sound here. How do you be able to make that noise? Okay, as you can see, I got my old redneck gator. I call it my redneck gator because I cut the top off a Jeep, put a roll cage on it. It's my outside yard vehicle. Uh, this is what I'm gonna be doing the drive shaft on. You see, I got it up on the ramps here. I put the ramps on it under it that way just so it be, wouldn't be in my way while I was crawling in and out from underneath it. Let's get under here and see if we can show you what those U-joints look like and what we can do to take them apart. Okay, okay, now we're down here underneath where the drive shaft's at. If you can hear that, lost motion there you can hear it going click 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 but uh so we're gonna see if we can impact those off whoops i dropped my socket so we'll just put the impact on there back these four bolts off come right out so far so good You see here, the cap's gonna come off here. The, that holds the uh, bearing cap in place. Get the last one off here. Oops, get on it. Oh, I got it. See if that cap comes loose, it's easy. Ugh. Looks like I'm gonna need a little bit of a pry bar here. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this one-handed, but I got the the cap off. Let's see if I can pop these loose. There we go. I didn't see that came loose. Well, in this up here, it just slips into the transmission. So I'm gonna pop that right on out, just like that. Drive shaft out. Okay, now what we got to do is get these circlips out of here. Sometimes they're in there pretty tight. So what I'll do typically is drive down on these. With my big punch like that and typically you can get in here and pry those things right out we'll see see if i can get it done here and you can see here you'll basically have to destroy these most likely to get them out your new uh new joints will come with New ones. See, that's rotating there, pop it right out just like that. We're gonna fast forward through the rest of it. No sense in watching me break all these loose and get all those out. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to knock them apart. Take your vise, a regular bench vise, spread it open enough so that this huge joint can sit right there in those jaws. You're going to strike it right here because you're going to try to drive this bearing cap up by using its own U-joint. Just like that. Got that one driven up. Let's go back to the other side here. See if we can do the same action. That one's tight. 
that don't want to move. We're going to grab a bigger hammer. I know y'all are thinking that's the redneck way. If it don't move, get a bigger hammer. But this, in this case, it has to be done. And we got to pop loose. Put a little dent in my drive shaft too. Oh well, this one isn't going on the highway. Might be able to sneak that bearing out of there. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. To get the idea, you can sit there and work it out. Get that bearing out of there, then you can drive the caps out. Needles are going to go everywhere. No doubt about that. Let me see if I can get it to come out a little bit further here. There we go, just like that. One bearing out. Let's get the other one out. Just like that, your joint's clear. Now what I'll do is I'll take this thing and I'll run it across the wire wheel, clean all this garbage off of it. On this other side, when you're knocking it apart, you gotta do the same thing, except you'll be laying the yoke across it like that. And hitting right here. Oh, drop my hammer. There. See, we got that out, so I'll take a punch and knock that the rest of the way out. Same thing with this one. I don't hit your. Try not to beat up this area too much. Concentrate your blows right here. Rings everywhere galore. All right, we'll go clean these up and I'll show you how to put them back together. Okay, I wire wheeled the outside of this, got it pretty clean. Let's see if I can get in a picture here, just decent. So you can see the outside's pretty clean. I got a little wire wheel here. I'm gonna go in here and clean out the rust and stuff inside these grooves. There's a little snapper and groove that I wanna have nice and clean. Just like that. See if we can get this. See that snap ring groove? It's nice and clean. Then we'll start putting them back together. So the one thing you want to be careful of when you're putting it back together is you don't want these things to come apart while you're beating on them and have this bearings just go everywhere. Makes it a horrendous thing to try to put back together once your needles start falling on the floor. So what I like to do just get one in there about like that. Let's see if we can get your, whoops, uh, hang on, there we go. We'll get the needle started down in there. Then I'll kind of hold it up with my hand, lay this side down on the bench and just start tapping it down in place. And you wanna make sure you're holding this up. So if you don't hold it up, it's gonna fall down, your needles are gonna fall out, and that's a that's gonna make a mess out of things. So 
I can get it down about flush there. You can see I lost no needles. Flip it over, go to the other side. Set this in there and bring this up so it's halfway between. I don't know if it's easy to see that. But that'll hold the needles from falling out down here and hold the top ones from falling out while you're trying to start this one in. So now it's in far enough that no matter which way it goes, those needles won't fall out. Now I'm going to get a, a driver here so I can finish driving those in. Hold on. Now what I'm going to do is just use an old impact socket that just fits inside that hole. You're going to drive that down until it's just past that snap ring. Until we get that snap ring in. pair of pliers here see if I can pop that in just squeezing it in just enough to get it inside the groove there it's inside the groove now I'll take and do the same thing to this side we'll drive it down so it's just inside there Give it a little tap there. Gonna make sure it's seated. Now what you're gonna have now, what I've done here is this thing is really, really, really tight. And you don't want it that tight. And I'll show you how we're gonna free that up here in a minute. Okay, this is where it gets just a little trickier because now we got more things to hold on to while we're doing this. But it's the same situation. We're gonna slip this right in here. We're gonna hold this up. See how I got that up there where the bearings? I'm holding the bearing in place. Got that flush, let's flip it over. We'll lift up like we did on the other side. Enough to get inside the bearings there and stay inside the other ones on the bottom. We'll tap that in place. It's a good feeling once you get it that far, you know nothing's coming out. Whoa, I went way far on that one. It's okay, well, I'll leave it out when I'm done. Put our snap ring in there. When you go in a little too far it's all right we can make it work there that's in place you can see how far below it is we can fix all that here it's no big deal almost there Now, as you can see, this joint's really tight. Not too bad that way, but really tight. We'll fix that. It's an easy little trick. Let's get this snap ring in. There, that's all in place. Let me readjust the camera here and show you if I can get this to show you how to do this. So as you can see here, things are way too tight. They should be a lot more, oops, let's see if I can get in the shot here. A lot more free moving than that. 
what you do to give things a seat is just get it give it a little hit like that all of a sudden you see how much freer that got like you want then hold it on this end i can do it here you got another shot here get a little that does is settle everything up against that snap ring now as you can see this thing and there's no noise no lost play now no lost motion now we're going to stick it right in here there's a place for a grease zerk that came with the kit we'll go ahead and stick that back in so we got the new greaser here we'll get that started in there and we'll tighten it down now once you got the greaser in take your grease gun let's pump this thing with some grease it takes a few shots you want to fill up those bearings nice it comes with preloaded bearings but I like to squirt it till I just see we'll see if we can see it there there's a little bit of grease coming out around that boot. That way that thing's properly lubed. It's gonna go for a long time. All right, we'll do the second end and then we'll stick it back in the Jeep. Okay, now that I have all the U-joints in, I'm gonna show you one thing here. These shafts only go in one way. I don't know if I can get it to show up on the camera here. There's a skip tooth right here that you'll see on these splines. That, has a, that only goes into the transmission one way. It has a, a raised area there, a raised spline, or it's not skipping a spline, and it only goes in one way. Now what I'm gonna do here, folks, is it's pretty dry in here. I'm gonna put some grease in there. Uh, just glob a little bit of grease in there. I'm gonna put a little bit on the outside here. This thing has a slide up, in and out, in and out, as you go over in bumps and stuff. It's called a slip yoke. And you wanna make sure that's got plenty of lube on it. Otherwise, that can also make some noise. You just Also, you can wear it out start getting some uh, worn splines and then you're replacing this yoke which can cost you a little bit more than new joints okay. okay we're back in the jeep we're gonna see if we can hear any of that noise while it's in four wheel drive again I'm hoping i got it all cured let's just take it on a little test drive around the property here do some tight turns see if we can get it to make that crunching sound reverse and see what happens. I think we got it. Nice. I think I got it all fixed. Front U joints aren't in perfect shape, but they'll hold up for now. Do a little drive around here, a little test run. Let's see what it does. Make sure it makes no noise. Nice, not hearing that crunchy sound. It's slippery through here. There's no problem. No problem. Ooh, a little drifting. tracks and you can see they weren't following each other it's a little muddy right here just had a little spring thaw today at least the crunching sounds gone that's nice Thanks, folks. Thanks for watching this edition of uh, Michael's Backyard Marina. Uh, no boats today, but uh, we'll be we'll be back on boats before you know it. 
Uh, looks like we got my Jeep all fixed up and running good. This thing's got uh, only 256,000 miles on it, so it needed some U joints. I did the front U joints uh, in the knuckles, on the steering knuckles uh, last fall when I got the thing, but uh, now she's getting ready to rock and roll again. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like what you see. Tell me more of things you'd like to see fixed. Uh, I kind of tinker around and fix up a bunch of different things. Uh, that's my dogs barking. Let's take a look at them. See if we can get a video on them. Hey, what you two barking at? Tell everybody hi. Come on, Ella. Riley, say, say hi. Come on, can you talk? Oh, you bark all other times. She won't bark now. Of course. There's my girl, Riley. She's like an eight month old standard poodle. That's Ella. She's a, about an eight, nine year old poodle. So good dogs.